Hi everyone, this is Tomáš Kellner from GE. We are coming to you live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco, the home of GE's Minds and Machines Conference. And I'm here with uh, Gene Soroka, Soroka, the Executive Director of the Port of LA, and uh, Chris Chase, the Marketing Manager at uh, uh, the Port of LA. You know, gentlemen, I have a question for you. Uh, Yesterday and today, we had people here who talked to us about um, digitizing gas turbine or uh, digitizing a uh, jet engine, but you digitize an entire port. Uh, and in fact, it's not just an, an ordinary port, it's the, it's the largest port in the Western Hemisphere. How, how do you go about that? Where do you start? I mean, the task seems extremely daunting. Well, it has been a lot of work, but quite satisfying to mm -hmm. this point. Data points exist throughout the supply chain universe, mm -hmm. and we have, along with GE Transportation, have found a way to harness those data points, put them into one single pane of glass through aggregation, mm -hmm. and give us visibility to all the activities happening within the supply chain. We're very pleased with the progress to date. You make it sound easy. So t oh, tell it's, us. It's <laughs> a lot of great talent at GE Transportation. Uh -huh. Our own staff at the Port of Los Angeles has put in countless hours mm -hmm. of working with our customers, stakeholders alike, and doing a lot of work inside the department to find the best way to fashion this idea. Now I want to get inside and sort of look under the hood, actually, what you did. But uh, just give us the span, of, like the magnitude of the work. I mean, I know that you set a world record unloaded to, for unloading a ship in 2015. And tell us about that undertaking, what it took and now how long it would take you today with the digital technology? CMA CGM, the liner shipping company based in Marseille, France, came to us with an opportunity in the latter part of 2015. They wanted to bring the largest container vessel to ever call a Western Hemisphere port, the 18,000 TEU Benjamin Franklin. We had about six weeks to plan exactly how we would work the vessel, what it would be loaded like in Asia, timing, performance needs of the company, and many other details about servicing that ship. Mm -hmm. We did it through sheer will and determination, flat file spreadsheets, conference calls and mm -hmm. Skypes, late at yeah. night with our Asia colleagues, and we were able to manufacture more than 11,200 container moves using nine and 10 cranes, while manufacturing also about 12 trains no less than two miles in length each that move from the Port of Los Angeles to the interior of the United States. Mm. Just a great operation. But now with digital, how would you do that with digital? Well, I think w what we did over that six weeks time period, yeah. we could now do in minutes. And that is how powerful the predict system is as our platform mm. and the ability to use predictive and prescriptive analytics to help us do the operations. And the predicts is the, that's the operating system, that's the software, software platform that uh, G developed, or G Digital developed for the industrial internet. That's correct, uh, and now it's in use at the Port of Los Angeles. That's amazing, now Chris, tell me about the stakeholders, like who does, who has to come to the table to make something like that happen, go from six weeks to minutes? Well, same stakeholders, they just got to step their game up. Yeah. Um, we have the shipping lines themselves, baseline of what we start from. We have our terminal operators mm -hmm. who load and unload the ships. Then you have all the people who actually move the containers from there. We have our labor groups, mm -hmm. we have the railroads, we have the trucking companies, we have chassis providers, and we have the cargo owners themselves, and they all have to play together. And that is the challenge that we faced. And as the port, we don't own any of this data. So we are working with our partners to get them to work together in an industry that historically had not been real good at sharing information. Mm -hmm. And seeing the advantages of what the digital fields can offer mm -hmm. is what has changed their mind about how to share data. Mm -hmm. GE offers something secure, something that they don't have to worry about their issues or whatever they may be. They understand that this is secure. Mm -hmm. This is not going to go out to the rest of the world. Their proprietary information is not in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And that is what the first step was in convincing them of why to do this. Mm -hmm. Once we hit that part, now it's just the steps of how do we do this better? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, we got this initial level of information. I can have visibility I didn't have before. Now what's next? And that's the exciting part. So, so this is really fascinating. Now, tell us about the uh, tell us about the kind of information that you had to pool. I mean, was it information about the cargo that's coming in, where it's going, uh, also who's going to take it there? I mean, sure. do you, all of that. Yeah, uh, customs. You, I mean, you guys you really got it. Yeah, it started off by building a relationship with U.S. Customs in Washington, mm -hmm. and then the partnerships, as Chris mentioned, with the liner shipping companies to share that data, overlay it, examine it, so we know what is coming to us. The beauty is that information was available in, in grayscale format, maybe two days before a vessel arrived in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. 
Today, our goal was to try to get that information about 14 days mm -hmm. before it comes to LA. And we're seeing, based on origin, as much as 38 days prior to arrival in Los Angeles, we've got visibility to what's That's going so to be I'm on that ship. Absolutely. That is now, probably the working level, Chris, will be between 10 and 14 days yeah. for most of our Asia origins coming in. Mm -hmm. And that information is going to be so powerful because it can be used by our partners in the Western Railroads, the trucking firms, the chassis providers, so they can place their assets and their human talent Mm -hmm. at the proper location at the right time. Mm -hmm. And they'll have much more time to plan all these activities. It's very interesting because with this, we now also have the ability to bring other systems into Predix. Mm -hmm. Maybe a universal appointment system for the truckers. We do 35,000 truck moves per day at our port. Wow. So to try to have machine learning and the use of big data to go along with these complex iterations mm -hmm. of cargo movement is going to be very helpful to us. I, I imagine besides moving cargo, you're probably saving some fuel there. You don't have to, the guys, the drivers, sort of sit there and with their, with their engines you know, and uh, that, idling. That, Tomas, that's such a great point. Because last year, as we implemented some of the theories between GE Transportation and ourselves, mm -hmm. we grew the port's business by 9% in volume last year. Mm -hmm. But we reduced diesel particulate matter by 40% per container. Wow. Simply because we're employing these methods of a smoother conveyance process mm -hmm. and less touches to each box. Now tell me, how does it, how does it look? I mean, do you have a, uh, on a computer that like you see what's happening. So what is the interface that uh, is telling uh, managers uh, in the port what to do? And yes, when? it's a web-based portal mm -hmm. that has channeled access dependent on the user's persona. Chris, why don't you take them yeah. through yeah. Sure. exactly what we're showing today. So today, we have, like, as Gene said, personas. So yeah. depending on where you are in the supply chain and what your job is, truckers see what truckers are supposed to see, railroads see what roads, and all the way down the line, we have about six personas right now. For us as the port, our visibility is actually less important than our customer bases. So we're having them see what they need to see. So the interface between the truck driver, the terminal, and the cargo owner, mm -hmm. they all share and see basically the same data displayed in the same way. You're working from the same book of information. Mm -hmm. You know, we like, we like sports, right? It's like a playbook in football. Yeah. Everybody has to be on the same page, yeah. doing it, following those directions. And it, right, right today, it's simple. It's a portal, you go to a website and see it. And the advantages and the next steps as we're going along in this process, we have operating systems throughout the port that our customer base use. We can send the information right back to them. We don't need to use a portal. We don't need another web-based, you know, web application you need to open. Yeah. You use the application you guys developed and it goes right into the existing system. It just, we're trying to make life easier for everybody. That's the end of the end goal. And this is a Predix app. This is, is a Predix app. Yeah. This is a Predix, Predix we can see on a screen, mm -hmm. pull it up, or we can send it to their existing system they've had for years, they've spent all their time on, but Predix controls it. Predix tells them what they need to tell in the right mode. And that's probably the biggest key. We have an example, we're talking about what this means to people. Yeah. Our trucking oh. community typically would open somewhere between 15 and 20 windows every day at the same time to try to return containers to our terminals. Mm -hmm. We can do it in one screen. Wow. That's, that we're talking about three to four hours per person okay. being saved. Just as something as simple as what we're doing, and it sounds simple, it's not, but the simple answer is there's so many opportunities that we have barely scratched the surface on. So you just cut through clutter and you just That's right. simplify everything. That's right. We now, scared the GE people half to death when they saw that screen open, a, a trucker's yeah. dispatch center, <laughs> yeah. what, what's going on here? But it was fantastic because GE can grab it right. and say, I know how to fix that right now. We do this right. for everybody, and this is our job to do this. And it just, they open up a window of possibilities that many of these people who work in an industrial space who don't get out to mines and machines, mm -hmm. who don't know about this type of business, we can solve their problems and they didn't even know that it could even be close to being solved. Now you've been on this digital journey for a couple of years. Uh, uh, a little more than three, three years now. Three years. Yes. Uh, so what, adv what advice would you give to companies that uh, want to embark on this digital transformation? Well, one I'd say join us. I think we've developed a very good formula and it's one of collaboration, mm -hmm. where we're working very closely with the stakeholder groups, showing them what the power of Predix can be, but we're also asking the users to help us define what they need. Mm -hmm. So that collaborative spirit that we've brought, earning user trust and acceptance, mm -hmm gaining ideas from those who are experts in the field, whether it's organized labor who sure. plans out the ships in the yards, yeah. to the cargo owners, as Chris described, who really will be 
able to share the information with their trusted service providers. Very key as well. Mm -hmm. I would also say that we can break down some paradigms and some walls, et cetera, but really partnering with experts, and I would say that General Electric Transportation mm -hmm. has really taken an idea and brought it to market in such a way that we're getting a lot of excitement from the industry. This will be transformational. Well, tell me about the transportation partnership. How did it work? How did you work with them? Yeah, originally we had an idea that if information sharing could be helpful and we could bring down some of those silos, mm -hmm. I think we could have an opportunity to do things a little better than we're doing today. And it was really born out of crisis. Mm -hmm. When I first took on this job, we were epic levels of traffic congestion. Mm -hmm. We had a debilitating fire at one of our key terminals. Mm -hmm. Chassis providers were coming into the mix after divestiture of those assets. Mm -hmm. New liner companies, new liner company partnerships were developing, mm -hmm. and we were in the middle of a protracted labor negotiation. Mm -hmm. So wow. we were at the depths of everything, well, was full. everything being dislocated yeah. as it could. So once we got to the point where we knew we had a pathway going forward, especially with a new labor contract, we then brought people together. Mm -hmm. And it was just a community of building people mm -hmm. and building ideas. And I thought that was quite powerful at the time because yeah. we needed good minds around the table. And through partners in the industry, we found General Electric Transportation, who had done a lot of work in the rail sector and other right. parts of the supply chain. Optimizing railroads. That's exactly cargo right. cargo moves uh, between Correct. cities, yeah. Right, and they also have, of course, being one of the world's greatest locomotive engine builders, mm -hmm. a great knowledge of how cargo moves. Mm -hmm. So bringing them to the table, that's not the all- That's the domain expertise, as they talk about. That's right, yeah. that's right. So they brought that expertise, plus this great technology of digital industrial. And that to us was a great match, and then we started collaborating. And from there, I, I tell you, we're improving every day. That's great. Well, some of the, let's talk about some of the challenges that you encountered, maybe that you didn't expect. Maybe you can tick off a few. Well, I think uh, what we're facing right now is a lot of interest in uh -huh. this product well, and good. how other folks could yeah. utilize it, which is great. Right. Yeah. So we've got to be able to scale the right way, and that was part of the design but also we're going to be implementing in the, the complete Los Angeles area from the mm -hmm. port perspective, and we must do it right. And that's why with Chris, along with other colleagues, Dave Casey, David Libatique, Andrew Scott, many others who are on the case today, we're really making sure that we dot all the I's and cross the T's. Well, let's talk about the future. So uh, if you had a crystal ball, so in two years, so where are you going? Well, I'd like to see this really enhancing the capabilities of the Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach in the San Pedro Bay area. Mm -hmm. And I believe two years down the line, we'll have many major ports around the world subscribing to this system mm -hmm. and helping collaborate. What would be great is one day that both the Port of Shanghai and Los Angeles are on the system so we can collaborate digitally. You can learn. It, you can learn from, and uh, learn from each yeah. other, replicate best practices, and that's just one of many examples. Mm -hmm. Port of Los Angeles connects the world to trade, and I'd like to see many of our partners join us. That's fascinating. You could, you could create a database of best practices that uh, everybody else could use uh, right. to optimize uh, uh, their traffic. Right, and when it comes to the optimization and all the work that we're doing, the greatest responsibility we have is the support of our workers. Today in California, 30% of the, our, all of our workers are in the transportation and logistics industry. Mm -hmm. In Southern California, more than a million jobs, one in nine in the five county Southern California region, are related directly to the San Pedro Bay Port Complex. Mm -hmm. So that is an awesome responsibility to keep good jobs moving with cargo through this logistics process. Great, well Gene, thank you so much. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for talking to me. Before I let you go though, I have a, I have a, a few rapid fire questions <laughs> for you. Uh, the digitally tinged, uh, <laughs> tell me about, we talked about apps and, and optimizing uh, ports with, a, with an app. Uh, what was the last app that you downloaded? Mine's the machines when I got into town yesterday. Okay, that's a good one, me He's, too. He stole mine, but okay. uh, so that's the last one I did too. Okay. <laughs> Where do you get your news? Uh, I get a lot of direct texts from the major news outlets, mm -hmm. including our local folks, LA Times, okay. our local news stations as well. And with those apps, you get direct alerts on all breaking news. Okay, so digital? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'd say average, unfortunately, I'm a commuter. Okay. So uh, my local n radio news station is where I get a lot of it because That's I obviously can't look at my phone when I'm driving. Yeah, so. Right. <laughs> so uh, hunter or gatherer? Uh, probably a little bit of both. I okay. like going out there and attracting, uh, attracting the business, <laughs> but I also take great pride in building communities and stakeholder groups. Great, Chris? We're all cut from the same cloth here at the port, yeah. I had to say, because we're about the same. We know what we want to do, but we also know that it yeah. requires us, we can't do it alone. Everything in the logistics industry is with multiple part people, multiple options, and we have to do it together. So okay. we're both, it's always both. Sounds great, uh, Batman or Superman? Wow. 
That's a tough one. I'd like to say Superman because that's what the port represents. The super capabilities of bringing people yeah. together. I'm going with Superman. Superman. I always like that. All right, now, this, one is, this is a tough one. It's a tricky one. When I dance, I look like blank. Not real good. <laughs> Not real good? Uh, I'd say Elaine Bennis from uh, Seinfeld. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Uh, uh, favorite icon or hero? Uh, I would say my dad. Okay. I'm going to go a little differently. I'd say people I emulate. I love sports. I always loved Howie Long growing up as a great football player. Okay. And if I could do something different besides what I do today, I'd be Jimmy Buffett. Okay. That's a great lifestyle right there. Sounds good. <laughs> and um, morning, noon, or night person? All day. With a job like All this, day. we've got great okay, responsibilities. 24 hours. Yep. Okay. He's a 24 hour guy. Again, I'm a commuter. I'm an early morning guy, by, not by choice, but by force. So okay. I'm early morning. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh